All right, guys, it is 6.38 p.m., September 14th, 2017. Got some news for you. So, I've been watching these two formations down here for a couple days now, and we have some confidence in these becoming storms. Now, uh, for the most part, when you see models like this, when they go into the red and you get above 70%, um, you can pretty much guarantee these storms are going to form especially this one here. This one's concerning to me. Uh, they're both concerning to me, don't get me wrong. Uh, this one seems to form, and then it breaks up and then reforms again. Believe it or not, this is projected to become a full-blown hurricane by the time it reaches Santa Domingo. It's projected to go from the south side up through the north and then reform, guys, right here. This is what the data is showing, and that's why I'm bringing it to you. So once again, Disturbance 1, according to the chart, 70% chance of cyclone formation in the next 5 days, 20% chance in the next 48 hours. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm seeing 3 to 4 days before we see Tropical Storm here with this. Uh, this one is a different story. This one is forming quickly, and that's why this bubble here is a little shorter, the time frame. So... Within five days, they expect this thing to travel this far, and it takes this long to form. This one is a little bit of a better chance. It's already forming. It's got condensed storms, and it's already starting to spin. Now, I want to show you really quick why these are so concerning to me. I'm going to move you back to the 14th. Here we have Jose, okay? Now, just follow if, uh, with me here. Here's Friday the 15th. Saturday the 16th. Now here's where I want you to watch. Here's that first storm with the long bubble I showed you that they're expecting to form 70% uh, 70 per, 70 chance in the next five days. According to Ventu Sky, not only does it form, but it becomes a significant hurricane by the time it gets to Santa Domingo. And as we move forward, you're going to see that. Again, look at this storm, guys. This one is very compact. It's already got spin to it, and it's very close to the west coast of Africa. This is what Irma did. Irma formed very soon, and that's why we saw Irma break all those records with the longest time being a Cat 4, um, longest hurricane. I don't know if that's if it is the number one longest hurricane, but it was way up there on the list. So guys, it's very important to check these storms out. The reason I'm bringing this to you now is because this is what uh, the new data is showing. Um, this is significant because in the near future, if this stuff stays true, all three of these storms are going to play a part in each other, and I'm going to show you why. Here is Sunday the 17th. By this time, they're expecting Jose to be at least a Cat 1. So guys, expect Jose to grow. I honestly think Jose is going to get bigger before we see the end of it. I know it's a tropical storm now. A lot of people are saying it's done, it's over, it's going to whip out into the Atlantic, get sucked up by the jet stream, and that's it. We want that to happen, but in reality, guys, I just don't see it going that way because of these other factors, and I'm going to try to explain that as quick as I can and as clear as I can. So we are at Monday the 18th. Now, we have formation here. Um, like I said, 70% chance by the time it gets to this area, tropical depression to a tropical storm to a hurricane. This one here is what's interesting to me. Now, I have spaghetti models for this storm here. I'm going to show you those. Here we go. This storm is projected because of the changing pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic. They're, these models, they're very consistent up until about 30 degrees west here. And then they show this thing hooking out to the right. And what that's showing me is that there's less pressure in this part of the Bermuda Atlantic than there is here. And I, I've been telling you guys that it's rare for these storms to go into this pressure area. But if there's less pressure in one area, it's going to favor that direction. Now, also notice the European model. This is the model that basically predicted Irma from the start to go up the west side of Florida. So there's a lot of reliance on this model now. So just the fact that the people who control this model put this out for people to see means they're fairly confident that this thing could possibly ride west over the Leeward Islands and then become an issue once it gets over here. Now, the situation I'm going to try to explain here is if this storm were to go to the right, that shows me that there's less pressure here and that all the pressure is right here. And that's also playing a part in why Jose is getting stuck in this area and why there's so much confusion about the big cone here, about whether it's going to hit the east coast or if it's going to ride next to it. Um, there's a lot of pressure here, and that's what's keeping Jose in question. So, once again, here's that second storm spaghetti model that is going up. Less pressure here. That means there's more pressure here. And if you look at this model, this is that first storm I told you about with the long cone. 
Now this has also a 70% chance of forming, but this one they have riding more along, at least most of the models have it riding west, just like the European model had the second storm. Here's that European model again, and here's that the European model from the other storm breaking into this page. So you can see that the European models both suggest that they it's going to ride west towards the Leeward Islands. Now once again, if I go back to this storm, if this were to go up in here, again, that shows less pressure here, and now what I want to tie this into is Ventu Sky. So if we have this storm here, spaghetti model showing it possibly hooking up here, that means less pressure, that means more pressure here. Now as I move forward, here's Tuesday, here's Wednesday the 20th. By now, uh, Jose is expected to be west of Long Island, basically up into... Uh, Massachusetts, Boston coast, that area. Now guys, check this out. Now we are at full-blown Cat 1 hurricane right under Santa Domingo. Now by the 21st, it has almost landfall on Santa Domingo. It's projected, like I said, to go from south to north and then reform here while this storm is cutting through low pressure in the Bermuda Atlantic. Now this is significant because it, being that there's less pressure here and these winds are adjusting to it, Watch what Jose does. This is very interesting. I'm going to back up to the 19th. Here's Jose. Here's Wednesday. And now look at that. It shoots west in almost a, a, a west-south movement. It goes west, and it's also lower than it was the day before. Look. There's the 20th. There's the 21st. So it's cutting across. And now this is when they expected Jose to get picked up by the jet stream and then recycled into um, the global winds, basically, uh, in a nutshell. But look, this is Friday. Now look at the difference between the 21st and the 22nd. Not only is Jose still here, still has its shape, still has its spin, but it's heading south. Remember, this is now the high pressure zone. So picture the bubble being right here. This was that third storm moving up into this area, and what that's doing, guys, is that is causing pressure and keeping Jose in this area. So these three storms are playing off each other. Here's the 23rd, another southern dip. Look at the difference here. Here's the 22nd, here's the 23rd. Jose is coming back south, guys. This is the last bit of data I have, at least for now. I'll have more in a couple hours, but here we go. This system causing pressure, not allowing Jose to come in this direction. We have this storm that went through Santa Domingo, reformed on the other side, and is now a hurricane again. And then we have Jose. So guys, we need to keep a close eye on this. Um, I'm not trying to get anyone worked up, but seeing data like this is very interesting because I always talk about, excuse me, I always talk about the pressures uh, whatever's going on in the Gulf, the jet stream, and the Atlantic pressure. Now, all this stuff is playing playing significant roles uh, on one another, if uh, that makes sense. So this is what we're dealing with right now. We may have a hurricane form right around this area, move up through Santa Domingo, and be here by the 23rd, and then Jose making basically a third loop-de-loop, -loop, recycling itself and coming back down towards this storm. Now, I know people are going to start talking about merging hurricanes and stuff like that. Um, guys, I really can't talk much on that. I haven't seen it happen. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying to see two storms like this, this close together, and the movements, if this one is moving up this way and Jose's coming this way, we have, we have a few possibilities here. We could be talking a double hit on the East Coast. Depending on how the jet stream changes, one of these may go into the Gulf. Um, it, it's really up in the air when you're this far ahead in the charts, but just seeing how confident the charts are in these formations is very significant. And that's also why they have these models. It, they don't put these models out unless they have uh, pretty high confidence that these are going to be significant storms. Again, here's that first one that ends up by Santa Domingo. Here's the one that wraps up into the Bermuda Atlantic, showing us that there's less pressure here, and then causing pressure, allowing Jose to make a southern dip once again. We are saying that Jose may be recycled for a third time and become a third threat. And all while that's going on, we may have another hurricane going on at the same time. This is what the data is showing, guys. That's why I'm bringing it to you. Here's this chart again. 
Here's our Navy satellite. Here is Jose beginning its uh, counterclockwise spin again. Expected to be a Cat 1, possibly a Cat 2 by the time it gets north of Virginia. And then we have our flash over here. You can see the formation behind it. Very compact storm. More than likely will become a tropical storm. As it comes up in this area, it gets weaker, but that's not. But that doesn't mean it's not playing a role. It's playing a significant role in the reason why Jose is being shown to come back south. So this storm, and then this would be our second hurricane if it forms again, which it looks like it's going to. So guys, we have a lot going on right now. Really quick satellite images. Here is Jose. Very strong storms uh, blowing out through the middle, showing that we still have really good formation. You're going to start seeing the bands again. Here is that second storm that broke up, and they're expecting to reform and then go through Santa Domingo and then become a significant hurricane by the time it gets level with South Florida. And then we have this storm that is projected to go up into the west side of the Bermuda Atlantic, causing Jose to make a southern dip and recycle itself, believe it or not. Again, this stuff might all change. There will be changes, I can guarantee that. But guys, when they have data this confident, it, it's, the, the chances are just much higher. We're not dealing with the possibility of tropical depressions. We already have one. We have a second one that formed and then broke up, but they're projecting it to stick back together and form as a significant hurricane. And really quick, here is our wind map again. We have Jose going north, getting pushed down by that pressure we've been talking about, reforming its spin, and now we're waiting to see exactly how strong uh, Jose will become again, projected to be a Cat 1. I agree with that at least, possibly a Cat 2. But guys, remember, at this point, according to this data, it doesn't really matter if it makes landfall or not, because this third storm may be playing a role in aiding Jose to make a third roll down in towards the Leeward Islands and possibly being in this spot once again. That's why this video is significant and that's why I want you guys to watch this stuff. I'm going to be all over it. Um, guys, that's what I got for you for right now. I will bring you any significant updates as soon as I get them. I'm going to try to get an update out for this evening. If not, we will be talking first thing tomorrow morning. Guys, thank you so much. We are going to watch this close.